I've gotten a few requests to cover this one public speaker who goes around promoting the power of the subconscious mind. This man is called Bruce Lipton, and his speeches have been uploaded to many YouTube channels. I've seen a couple already, and I held off on responding to this guy for a while, but today is the day where we finally investigate the claims made by this man. So without further ado, let's lose some brain cells together. I will show you the science of actually how the cells work, and you will have more knowledge than most doctors in the world today because they still believe in the genes. Whoa, we're 10 seconds into the video and there's already so much to unpack. Where do I even begin? So you're saying that listening to your speech will make you more knowledgeable than the majority of doctors who spent 4 years in college, 4 years in medical school, and many many more years in residency? Is that what you're saying? That you can make people surpass doctors who have sold their lives away studying and practicing? <laughs> What's the point of medicine at all then? And what do you mean doctors still believe in the genes? It's not a matter of belief, it's just fact. The science of genetics is fact. Not to mention that genes isn't everything when it comes to medicine. My god, I I already cannot handle this. You are made out of 50 trillion cells, and the cells are the living entities. So you are a community, not a single person. Eh, yeah, I guess. I mean, you could be both, right? You're both a community and a single person? There's only one consciousness, right? I feel like a statement like that is supposed to make me feel better about my life, but it really doesn't. Every cell in your body has minus voltage on the inside and positive voltage on the outside. Ah yes, yeah, some high school biology coming in. Cells are negatively charged on the inside due to a few factors, such as the difference between ion concentrations inside and outside the cell, and the presence of negatively charged proteins within the intracellular side of the membrane. But what does that have to do with anything? Every live cell is a battery. Every cell has about 1.4 volts. 50 trillion cells! in the body times 1.4 volts is 700 trillion volts of electricity in your body right now. Okay, look, 1.4 volts is about the voltage from a typical AA cell battery, not a biological cell. I feel like you just typed in what is the voltage of a cell on Google and took the first result, which is describing a physical battery. A human cell voltage is determined by its membrane potential. By definition, voltage is the difference between electric potentials, and that's pretty much what the membrane potential is. Now of course, depending on which cells you are looking at and what action it is performing, cells can be within a range of voltages. At rest, certain cells, such as red blood cells, are at about negative 8 millivolts. Skeletal muscles are at negative 95. Neurons, the one we're all familiar with is at about negative 70 millivolts. You get the idea. And then the membrane potential could change depending on what activity is being performed. For example, during the action potential of a neuron or at a muscle cell, membrane potential drastically rises to about perhaps positive 40 millivolts. Now the point I'm making is that each individual cell is not charged at 1.4 volts. They're significantly lower, that we have to measure them in millivolts. Now I don't know what point you're trying to make with this electricity idea, but if you're trying to put the human body in some pedestal saying that, I don't know, we can cure ourselves of diseases or enhance our body in some way, then you're just overestimating the body's abilities. And with training and meditation, you can focus this energy called chi, and you can use that energy for healing. Ah yes, chi. You guys will definitely see a video on chi in the future. That's a juicy topic I've yet to cover on this channel. A quick summary, it's nonsense. I also don't know why Lipton brought up chi since it's not really related to electricity in your cells. All animals and all plants communicate with vibration. Vibration! Yes, of course! Everything must be vibrating! And to top it all off, plants and animals communicate using vibration. <laughs> of course! Yeah, when I'm talking to someone, I'm not actually communicating with them with language. That's silly. They can just sense my vibration. Like I'm vibrating so hard, they just know instantly what I'm trying to tell them. It's just how it works. Vibrate more, folks. You know, the other day I was just walking through a park and, you know, there was a tree. I went up to it and, my god, it was trying to tell me something. You know, because that tree was fucking vibrating. You can sense it a mile away. So as a normal human being, I had to respond. It was just proper manners. So I vibrated at exactly 680 gigahertz. Cause you know, trees have low sensitivity. You gotta vibrate at your maximum potential to get your message across. So there I was, standing in front of the tree, vibrating my soul out. We had a nice conversation. Every day I went back to that tree to vibrate, and eventually we got married and had kids. Then we got divorced and I lost custody of those kids. Wait a minute, none of that actually happened. Because plants and animals can't communicate with each other by vibrating. The gazelle doesn't have to go up to the lion and say, are you my friend? Because at the distance, the energy could be felt and the gazelle will not go there because of bad vibes.
If we, when we were young, were taught to be sensitive to the vibrations, we would not find ourselves in bad relationships and bad places. But we are usually told not to go by our feelings, but to listen to what people have to say. Language was designed to hide feelings. Eh, I'm pretty sure language was designed for communication purposes. I don't know, just a hunch. But please, can you tell us how to sense these vibrations then? I'm really, really curious. Please? I'm just dying to know. You said that children can be trained to detect vibrations, so surely you've put together a procedure of some sort on how to do this? The point is, all organisms communicate by vibrations and know if they're in a good place or a bad place by reading the vibrations. We humans have that ability but are not trained to use that ability. Why would humans need to be trained to know how to read vibrations? You said that all plants and animals have the ability to communicate using them, right? So for them it's natural instinct, but for us we need to be trained? Now going to show you how your thoughts go out and affect your life on the outside. This is an older picture of a new technology called magnetoencephalograph, MEG. EEG, you put wires on your skin and read the brain activity. MEG, the, the probe does not even touch the head. You can read your brain activity outside of your head. It's not magic. Your thoughts are not contained in your head. Okay, the magnetoencephalography works by reading a very weak magnetic field that is produced from brainwaves. During periods of brain activity, an electrical current is produced in the neurons, of course, due to the difference in charged ion concentrations. And all electrical currents produce magnetic fields that is then detected by an MEG for medicinal purposes. But just because your brain produces a magnetic field doesn't mean that, quote, your thoughts are outside of your head. No, they're still inside your head. They just have a measurable influence that can be detected outside of the brain. The people that you get connected to, you are entangled with. And many people are familiar if you think about someone you, or talk about someone you haven't seen for years. And I say, oh, I haven't seen my friend John in 10 years. And the phone rings and it's John. Oh, gee, I sure wish Bill Gates would knock on my door right now and give me 10 million dollars. Ah, man, I really wish that would happen. Like, I really, really, really wish that would happen. Oh, come on, baby. So it's very important to recognize your thoughts and your judgments are not just connected to you, they're connected to the people you talk about. So people know that if you hit the right frequency, you can cause a crystal goblet to explode. It's called harmonic resonance or constructive interference. Well, actually no, constructive interference only describes two waves, not an object and a wave. Perhaps using existing terms to describe something different isn't such a great idea. You are like a tuning fork with your brain and you're broadcasting frequencies of your thoughts. Which goblet is going to respond to your thoughts? The one that is harmonically resonant with your thoughts. Okay, so this goes on for quite a while. I apologize for my overly sarcastic attitude today, I just can't help it. But here's the thing, Bruce Lipton isn't the only public speaker out there that promotes this kind of stuff. All over the internet, such as Twitter, YouTube, and Facebook, you find people promoting all sorts of stuff like how juice can fix an amputee's limbs, or how tapping into your subconscious mind can unlock your third eye and whatnot. Bruce Lipton here is one of those people. Now, he is actually famous for one specific claim that he makes, and that is that you can reprogram yourself just by believing. He emphasizes the placebo effect as an example that your belief that you will get better will make you better. And while that is true for a lot of cases of the placebo effect, he overemphasizes the effect of your psychological thoughts. You can't reprogram your genes just by thinking about it. And while epigenetics is indeed huge, you can't change it with your mind. Your environment does indeed have an effect, and Lipton promotes that to some degree, but that's another story. Overall, my impression on Bruce Lipton is that although he's involved in some legitimate science, the stuff he promotes on these online speeches and interviews can be quite nonsense. And it seems he got quite well known from this. It happens all the time. People get famous from spewing absolute nonsense. Why do these people get attention? It's so annoying. Like, should I be changing my strategy here? Should I stop promoting real science and instead make a separate channel claiming that doing the Fortnite default dance can cure cancer? Is that what I should be doing? Will that make me famous? Will I get to go on stage or on reality TV shows? <laughs> no, you couldn't pay me to say shit like that. Anyway, that's the end of the video today. Thank you to Fireshard and Elliot for being the top patrons once again.